The J-8B arrives in War Thunder with the release of update Winds of Change. It sits at the end of the main Chinese fighter line of BR-11.3. The J-8 was the first domestically designed and built Chinese fighter jet and was given the NATO reporting name Finback. So let's dive in and see what the J-8 is capable of in War Thunder. Now the J-8 has a long history and it involves a lot of Chinese names. I in fact do not speak Mandarin, but I'm going to attempt to pronounce these names. I'm sure I will end up butchering most of them, so apologies in advance. With that out of the way, the story of the J-8 starts in 1964 when the need for a long-range interceptor arose. While the J-7 was a solid tactical fighter, it lacked the endurance and altitude performance needed for long-range intercept missions. So on October 25, 1964, a conference to discuss design proposals was held. At this conference, Xinyang made a proposal to effectively upscale the MiG-21 F-13 to a two-engine design. This proposal offered a low technical risk and early entry into service, and due to these advantages, it was chosen. Design work began on the 17th of May 1965 after operational requirements were submitted. The J-8 would be a large plane that featured a crop delta wing and conventional tail. Both the wing and horizontal stabilators were swept at 60 degrees. The ventral tail was supplemented by two vertical fins to improve horizontal stability. The plane would be powered by two WP-7A turbojet engines housed side by side in an aft structure similar to that of the MiG-19. The plane was designed with five hardpoints in total with two on each wing and one under the fuselage. The armament consisted of two Type 30-1 cannons with 200 rounds per gun. The J-8 had a fully adjustable shock cone that housed a ranging radar that fed targeting information to the SM-8 gun sight. The design work suffered a setback when lead designer Huang Jitian died in a plane crash. However, Wang Nancho, the succeeding designer, and the rest of the team managed to finish design work by September and had a full-scale mock-up built by the end of December. Development would suffer another setback when the chief engineer at the Xinyang Aircraft Factory, Gao Fengqi, died from an illness. His successor, Liu Huangxi, would take over but would be removed from office in November 1966 during the Cultural Revolution. The program would then be transferred to the joint J-8 Development Command headed by Wang Xi. He was able to get development back on track and in August 1967, the first two prototypes would begin construction with the first prototype codenamed 001 RID being completed in June 1968. The J-8 would successfully complete its maiden flight on July 5, 1969 with Yu Yuan at the controls. However, shortly after this, the program would suffer its greatest setback when the flight test team, flight test command, and the chief design office at Xinyang were all disbanded, this being another effect of the Cultural Revolution. Because of this, the program came to a near complete halt. Between 1969 and 1979, the prototypes only made 1,025 test flights between the two. During this time, the program would run into several major bugs. Mach buffet twice, once before reaching supersonic speeds and once after, overheating in the rear fuselage, and engine flameouts. These would all be fixed over time, and on December 31, 1979, the development of the J-8 was complete. Full-scale production would begin on March 2, 1980, and the J-8 was accepted into service. The J-8 was given the NATO reporting name Finback A. Because of the long development period, the J-8 was already obsolete as soon as it entered service. Two projects were started in 1980 to modernize the J-8. The first was the J-8-1, later J-8A. This featured a new SR-4 fire control radar capable of guiding the then-in-development PL-4, a new Type 2 ejection seat, a rear hinged canopy, and a pair of Type 23-3 double-barreled cannons to replace the Type 30-1s. This was intended as a stopgap measure, but was never really successful as the PL-4 was designed to use failed to enter service. About a hundred of this type were built between 1985 and 1987. The second project was much more successful. This was the J-82, later redesignated J-8B. This featured a complete redesign of the forward section that led to 70% of the structure and systems being reworked. 
The air intakes were moved to the side of the plane to make room for a Type 208 radar in the nose. The fuselage was area ruled. The twin ventral fins were removed in favor of a single large folding one similar to that found on the MiG-23. The engines were upgraded from the WP-7As to a pair of WP-13As. The gun armament was reduced to a single Type 23-3, and the J-8B was capable of carrying PL-2s, PL-5s, and PL-8s. The original PL-10, a copy of the AIM-7, was successfully tested on the J-8B, but the lackluster range of the PL-10s prevented it from entering service, so the J-8B never carried it in real life. Design work would begin in 1982 and finish up in May 1984. The first prototype would make its maiden flight on the 12th of June 1984. This J-8B showed a drastic performance increase compared to the earlier J-8s thanks to its higher thrust-to-weight ratio. However, maneuverability only improved slightly as the airframe was limited to 6.9G. Initial production and service entry would be delayed until October 1988 as a Peace Pearl program was pursued. This was an attempt to get the U.S. to install the F-16's radar and avionics in the J-8B, but this agreement fell through after the Tiananmen Square massacre. So the J-8B would enter service with a Type 208. However, shortly after, the J-8B would receive an upgrade in the form of a new KLJ-1 radar. This radar was look-down shoot-down capable and could guide the PL-11, a copy of the Italian Aspide semi-active radar homing missile. This upgrade package also included new navigation equipment, a new HUD, and a new radar homing and warning system. The upgrade was designated J-82B or J-8B Block 2. The plane first flew in November 1989, was certified in December 1995, and entered production in 1996. In-game, the J-8B is equipped with a Type 208A radar. This radar only has IFF and BBR capabilities. The lack of lockdown, shootdown, and ACM really makes this a lackluster radar for an 11-3. The radar has three search settings, the default 60x10, a wide 120x10, and a narrow 10x4. The 10x4 can act as a pseudo-ACM, which does come in handy. The radar has two range settings, the first is 19 miles and the second is 37 miles. The max range you can lock a target with this radar is about 12 miles, though because the radar lacks look down shoot down, you can get chaffed off if you lock a target before you are ready to launch. While this is one of the worst radars on an 11-3 jet, you can still make it work. As for defensive avionics, the J-8B comes equipped with an SPO-10 RWR. It uses lights in one or two corners to indicate the direction you are being locked from within a 45 degree arc. Compared to NATO RWRs, it's pretty bad, but it's better than not having an RWR. After researching a rank 1 modification, you are able to equip 64 countermeasures. While having flares is a good thing, they aren't the auto-defeat missile button they are on other jets. Because the flares will drop in a wide V pattern below the plane, they don't seem to create enough heat to decoy off the missile. To defend against a missile, you have to drop the flares, roll over, and then pull into the flares. This way you put the flare between you and the missile, causing the missile to go for the flare. Not ideal, but at least it works. Moving on to weapons, the J-8B doesn't get much for air to ground. You only get Mark 82 dumb bombs and Type 90-1 rocket pods. Without a ballistics computer, using these will be up to your own skill. You're just shy of being able to carry enough bombs to kill a base, so only having 8 instead of the 10 needed, and the rockets really aren't that great. Honestly, there are better options for CAS in the Chinese lineup if that's what you're looking for. For air-to-air -air missiles, you get access to two options. You'll start off with a pair of PL-5Bs, and after researching the Rank 2 modification, you can equip up to four. The PL-5B recently got a huge buff. The max overload was increased from 20G to 30G, and the acceleration was dropped from 36 kilonewtons to 27.8 kilonewtons. This means the missile just pulls harder, and because it doesn't accelerate as fast, it also pulls tighter. Combine this with the high off bore sight launch capability and no launch overload limit, and you have one of the best short range missiles in the game. Personally, I think this is the best rear aspect missile currently in game. When it comes to actually using this missile, as long as you're within two miles of the target, the missile should have enough range to hit. 
though if you're in a high-speed tail chase, you might want to get a little closer before launching. The other missile available to the J-8B is the Aspide 1A. This is a semi-active radar homing missile that is an upgrade of the AIM-7 developed by the Italians. China then licensed the missile and built their own under the designation PL-11. In-game, the missile can pull an impressive 35G and can reach speeds up to Mach 5. While the stack card says the missile has a launch range of 50 miles, in practice you can expect it to hit targets slightly farther away than you can with an E2 or a Skyflash, but you're still severely outranged by the 7F. In games, I tend to launch the Aspide at targets between 5 to 7 miles. While the missile can hit targets further out, your target will also have more time to react and attempt to dodge the missile. Like I mentioned earlier, you also need to be wary of pre-chaff since the radar does not have a look down shoot down mode. So what I like to do is wait until my target reaches the bottom horizontal line on the radar when set to 19 miles. This will put them right at about 5 miles, so as soon as you lock them up, turn the missile on and fire. Remember, if they do chaff after you launch, continue to hold the lock as the missile can still track and hit them. For gun armament, the J-8B is equipped with a Type 23-3 23mm double barrel cannon. The gun has access to 200 rounds of ammunition and with a fire rate of 3,400 rounds per minute, you'll have a trigger time of 3.5 seconds. If you haven't realized it, this is a Chinese copy of the GSH-23L. It's a pretty good gun and that packs enough of a punch to knock out any aircraft with a good burst. It doesn't have the range of something like the Vulcan, but when you need to get in close, you can rely on this gun to get you the kill. The stock grind isn't that bad now that the PL-5B got buffed. The J-8B is still fast even when stock, so you should try to swoop in through a furball, get your missiles off, and then run away. This should hopefully net you a kill or two on unsuspecting enemies. Flares and missile modifications should be your primary focus early on, followed by the performance mods, and then the gun and ground ordnance mods. I wouldn't bother trying to ground pound to stock grind in the J-8B, as you'd have no good ground ordnance options early on or at all. One thing to keep in mind is that modifications on the J-8B do take a lot of RP to unlock, especially the tier 3 mods which each cost 63k, but you only need to research one to advance to tier 4. But keep in mind that you do have fewer mods overall than say the MiG-23 MLA. The MLA has 23 mods overall while the J-8B only has 15, so each individual mod on the J-8B will cost more. If we take a look at the tier 3 mods on the MLA, each cost 21k RP and you need to research 3 to advance to tier 4. So if we do the math that comes out to 63k RP needed, which is the exact same on the J-8B. The only reason I bring this up is I saw some people complaining about the cost of the mods on the J-8B when it was added and I wanted to clear things up about that. Moving on to performance, the J-8B is powered by two WP-13A-2 turbojet engines, each capable of producing 6,480 kg of force in afterburner and 3,830 kg of force dry. These two engines are very gas hungry and I suggest bringing 30 minutes of fuel over 20 minutes. However, they do give you some amazing acceleration. A spaded Kefir was the only plane able to out-accelerate me off the runway. Other planes will be able to catch up to you as you near Mach on the deck, as the acceleration will start to slow down. Do be careful going supersonic on the deck, as the J-8B will rip its wings around 745 knots, or Mach 1.12. Instead of staying on the deck, I highly suggest climbing, as this plane was designed to be a high-altitude interceptor. Since it is an interceptor, it has a fairly good climb rate of just shy of 40,000 feet per minute. Once you get up to altitude, the performance just gets better being able to easily cruise past Mach 1 and beyond at 20,000 feet. The J-8B also has some good maneuverability despite its large size thanks to its delta wing, though be careful as you will quickly bleed speed when you're making hard turns, though you can also use that to your advantage to stay behind opponents or avoid overshooting. When it comes to playing the J-8B in game, take it up to altitude. Everything about this plane just works better the higher you are. The radar doesn't have to deal with ground clutter, the plane accelerates faster, and the missiles can fly farther. What I typically like to do is take off, side climb at 10 degrees until I hit 500 knots or Mach 0.8, and then pitch up to 25 to 30 degrees for a climb up to 20,000 feet. 
I'll then level off and then turn in to look for enemies. I'll look for anyone up at altitude and target them with my ass bites. If I'm fighting the Americans, I'm very cautious of the F4J and its AIM-7F. He can fire long before I'm within range to do the same. So if I notice a 7F launch from long range, it's best to just dive and turn back towards friendlies. Once the initial high altitude engagements are over, you want to dive into fur balls to help your teammate. Avoid getting dragged into a turn fight and instead make boom and zoom passes, coming back up to altitude every time. The J8B has no problem dealing with phantoms in a dogfight, but MiG-23s can give you some problems. You can hang with every MiG-23 in a turn fight, but they retain energy much better than you do, so in a sustained dogfight you don't stand much of a chance of facing a competent pilot. To unlock the JAB will require 390,000 RP, and purchasing it will cost you 1.06 million SL. Crew training costs is 300,000 SL, the Expert qualification will set you back another 1.06 million SL, and the Ace qualification will require you to get 1.14 million RP with the plane, or pay 3,000 GE. Dispate the plane will require a total of 503,000 RP and 467,000 Silver Lions. In RB, the J8B has an RP modifier of 2.38 and an SL modifier of 3.3. This is normal for an 11.3, so nothing out of the ordinary here. However, its repair cost is a little high, sitting at 15,892 SL when fully spaded. You only get one skin for the J8B currently, and it's pretty bland in my opinion. There are a few decent live skins available, and I'll have those linked in the description. A neat fact about the default skin for the JAB is that the real life plane marked with 81192 is well known for having crashed into an American P3 patrol aircraft. The JAB has by far one of my favorite cockpits in the game. Forward visibility is a bit cluttered thanks to the bulky window supports, but you have good side and rear visibility. Your angle of attack and G counter can be found on the top left of the instrument panel. Navigation instruments can be found on the bottom left. Engine gauges are on the bottom right. And your radar is in the top right. You might have noticed that there is no speed indicator gauge in the cockpit. Well, to tell how fast you are going, you need to look at the HUD. On the left, we have a scroll bar that gives us our in-air speed in kilometers per hour. On the top left, we have true airspeed gauge, again in kilometers per hour, a Mach indicator, and a G indicator. In the middle, we have a pitch ladder as well as our gun sight. Top middle, we have a compass, and on the right, we have a scroll bar that shows our altitude in meters, and in the top right, we have another altitude indicator. Now, if you lock a target at close range, the gun crosshair will attempt to show you where you need to aim to hit the target. But in my experience, this is usually a bit off, and you need to end up leading a bit more to get a hit. When you go to warm up a missile, you will get an indicator on where to place the target for a missile to acquire a lock. Once you get a lock, a diamond will appear over the target. Though the diamond only appears when using the PL5 and it won't show up when using the Aspen. Alright, let's wrap this video up with the pros and cons before ending with the final verdict. Starting off with the pros, the J-8B is one of the fastest accelerating planes in the game and is only really beaten out by the Kafir. The PL-5B recently got a long-awaited buff and is now the best rear aspect IR missile in the game. The Aspide 1A is a very good semi-active radar homing missile only really being beaten out by the AIM-7F. The J-8B has some solid maneuverability thanks to the Delta Wing despite its ungainly pencil appearance. Moving over to the cons, the Type 208A radar is alright for 11.3 as it gets the job done in guiding the two Aspides, but its lack of lookdown shootdown and ACM mode really lets it down. The flare placement is by far the worst thing about this plane. It's very annoying that you can't just drop flares and pull like all other planes. While the Delta Wing gives the J8B good maneuverability, it will also bleed speed quickly during any hard maneuvering though this is nothing new if you've flown a Delta Wing aircraft before. Having only 4 missiles is below average for an 11-3, as 6 is the standard, with 8 being the best. The J-8B is a good addition to the game, but it's not something that's going to change the meta like the addition of the MLD. 
it finally gives China a plane capable of using semi-active radar homing missiles, though the plane should get a pulse Doppler radar, as the only J-8Bs to carry semi-active radar homing missiles in real life were Block 2s that had a pulse Doppler radar. The J-8B should also get the PL-8 in the future, which is a very capable all-aspect missile. Another thing to note is that the J-8B will get access to the custom loadout system whenever that comes to game. They must have run into some problems with that though, as it's been nearly three weeks since the patch dropped, and since it isn't ready, they had to add more loadout options to the J-8B. What are your thoughts on the J-8B? Let me know in the comments, and, and oh, one quick little thing of channel admin here before I end the video. I just hit 500 subs, and I wanted to thank everyone who supported me so far. I'm halfway to my goal of 1,000 by the end of the year, so I hope y'all keep supporting me. Also, it might be a little while before the next video. I've got finals coming up in the next couple weeks, so I'll be busy getting ready for those. After that, hopefully I'll be able to get back to one video a week. That's all I wanted to say. So as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.